We live in a world where news is a driver. It's going to become a driver of espionage. I know it's a strong term, nevertheless. It's what we're moving to. Some very serious ground. Which means if you speaking about the wrong topic, you can be held as per your conversation. And it's going to get very sticky. Very confusing. The other countries, as we spoke about a few days ago, are not very happy with the United States of America. You see, when America begins to have internal strife and security issues, there's a great loss of confidence in other countries concerning America. I don't like that some of these links are coming forward. I just don't like that at all. I don't, I don't like any link that compromises the security of the people of any country. I just don't. I don't care what it is. Somebody could have leaked something about chocolate ice cream. If it puts the people of a country in danger, I strongly disagree with it. And I stand against it. And action will be taken. Now, I can assure you of that. Some people play games. But I ask of you this. If you have a conversation on the Internet, do so responsibly. Don't ever make up stories about very critical things that at the time are not critical, but will be in the future. Right? Don't ever do that. It, it, it's time to really be watchful. You, you can't talk carelessly, but with all truth. If someone decides to prosecute a person based upon truth concerning your walk in the Lord, they do so in the strongest of error. But if you balloon any situation out there that you don't have direct knowledge of, and you happen to state a fact that you didn't really think was a fact, chances are you're going to pay a price. Be responsible with your conversations when you're dealing in certain areas. That is not to back down from any truth at all. It is to be responsible with what you're saying. There's a yet another sweep is going to have to take place. Too many leaks. I know you heard about the one. We're not talking about WikiLeaks. It's not what we're talking about. We're talking about people who are very close to treason is what we're speaking of. Should that be brought forward with that language? Well then, there's going to be a price to be paid by those who did so. And because your information is digital, it will be mined. I'm going to to you, most of your information is in the cloud. You do not own the cloud. Be responsible in your speech. Naturally, many people are going to, in the onset, you're brushing things off tonight. It's not a big deal. And I told you guys last week, trying to give you a hint of something. And I know I do this often, but I ask you guys not to get involved with what you heard in the news, no matter what it sounded like, looked like, don't take a side. Do you guys remember that? Do hmm? you remember that? I said, don't take a side. Listen, you, we have some not so good people all around the world, right? So if someone wanted to test to see who you were and they drop a knife, but they're holding you captive, you pick up the knife, and they drop that knife on purpose. You have just ended your own walk. But if you drop a knife, if somebody drops a knife who's holding you bondage, and you don't pick up that knife, they can hold nothing against you. You know, we talked about that in the Book of Acts this morning. We did. All of us have known for a long time. 
we have no privacy. We should have known that. As soon as you said yes to a license agreement on your device, your phone, you should have known that. You don't own anything, really. You don't. Your car, you're paying for it. But I can tell you right now, the components and the modules in that car, it's against the law. The back engineer them. They don't belong to you. And with that car comes a end user's license agreement. And it comes there. You'll never own the software. You're allowed to use it. Right? You're allowed to use it. So you can't get up in a roar about things. Right? The Bible says be holy in all manner of communication. Not holy according to our definition. Because listen, you still have to put the truth forward. I'm certainly not going to stop. But all truth is not expedient. Let me give an example. Would it benefit anybody in here if I told you Donald Trump's third name? No, it wouldn't. Would it benefit anybody in here if I divulged part of my own genome? No, it wouldn't. Nevertheless, it's truth, isn't it? So what I'm telling you is this. Our truth that is within the walk of a believer is from the Lord. Our truth. Because very soon, that's all that's going to matter the most. You're going to be concerned about that truth. The earth will respond in kind to man's self-destructive nature. The earth is responding to iniquity. If you read in the book of Isaiah, you're going to find out the earth is under a curse. All things are changing very fast. All of them. And some of us who dare to speak the truth of Christ and continue to do so, Yes, we're scrutinized and everything else, but I can tell you this, the persecution mankind has not seen in recent days. Because true persecution, well, we're going to continue to study that in the books of Acts, Lord will. Because I asked you a question last night. Are you willing to be shamed for the sake of the name of Jesus of Nazareth? Because most people aren't. And I'll tell you right now, I am. Not based on my truth, but the Father's truth. The truth he's already spoken because there is no new truth. There is only one truth, and that truth was established before the world was established. Truth goes hand in hand with faith, and the worlds are framed by faith. That truth exists before existence. There are some people who walk a path of pointing. Somebody asked a question last night, this morning, as I was talking to some of our friends overseas, <clears throat> on air, of course. I gave a second part of an answer. Somebody said, how do we expose darkness? That's what they asked. Should we then not point out the darkness and the, and the uh, things that other people are doing? And so I give an example. Here it is. I'll say it one more time. If you walk into a dark room, and there are lots of people in that dark room, how do you point out the darkness? You walk into a room, and it's in the middle of the night, no starlight, no electrical lights, and somebody shuts the door. Well, how are you going to expose that darkness? You have to yell, don't you? You have to yell and point. But guess what? If a man showed up at the door lit from the inside out, his very presence, because he is a light, would expose all darkness. You want to really expose the darkness? Then shine brighter. Hmm? Shine brighter and brighter and brighter every single day. You won't have to say a word, your very presence 
will shed light in all places that were dark. The beautiful thing about light is before you get, if you get dressed where it's pitch black, you don't know what you're going to look like when you step into the light. But when a light, when you flick the light on, you can observe your current condition. See, that's the goodness of the light. You can observe your current condition and make adjustments because now you can see. Can't do that in the dark. You guess a lot in the dark. Some of you guys might put on a shirt, a light turns on, you find out your wife's dress and it felt just like the material of your shirt. It even had buttons on it somewhere, you don't know how. Some of you women, in the dark you may put on makeup. Lights turn on, you've got green blush on, your eyeballs are orange. Your lips have eyeliner on them. You may look like a clown. I don't think you want to do that. It takes light so that you can see your current condition. Right? You want to expose darkness and truth? Then shine bright with the truth of our Lord and Savior, which is already established. Those in the darkness always yell. They always have someone to blame. Those of the light blame no one. Because everywhere they go, people can observe their own condition, their own. When you shine the light, it exposes the darkness, not you. That's why these ministry assaults are very distasteful to me. I wouldn't attack a ministry that was falling on its face because that's still my perspective. Because according to the book of John, uh, to the book of Acts, when you read in Acts, it looked like Peter and it looked like John were not doing such a good job to be thrown into jail. You want to expose darkness. And you spread the good news. Because that true light is the good news. Light allows a person to see their current condition. Remember when someone spoke to you a long time ago about the word, maybe recently, and you heard something pertaining to Christ, and it hit you, and you said, I've got to make some changes, because I'm not right with Christ. The reason why you felt that way is because someone shined the light on you. It shone on you. You looked at yourself. You observed yourself. You made changes. You saw that you were dirty. Did that person that was speaking the words of Christ point you out? No, they didn't. They were shining their light. And the one, here, here's the beautiful part about this. See, a lot of people say, well, I shine the light and people still don't respond. Let me educate you on something, please. Haven't you noticed of those who respond to the light? were those who were drawn to the light. Those who were not drawn to the light run from it. It's like a bug running in the shadows. You ever go out at night and shine a flashlight? You see in the summer, you see th little spiders and things scurrying. Wherever the light shines, they run away from. Because they are nocturnal creatures. Creatures of the night will stay in the darkness. Creatures of the day will be drawn to the light. They want to be part of the light. I'm not talking about a moth. Nocturnal creatures come out at nighttime. You're children of the light. And guess what? The natural, the natural sun will go down, but the true sun will rise again. 
children of the light. Your time is in the daytime. Work while it's day, because when the night comes, no man can work. Your children of the day. You, you are not nocturnal. Children of the day. Children of the light. Children of truth. I know some of you just lied a few minutes ago. Did something wrong. You're still children of the day. Children of the light. Or you would not tolerate hearing me in the first place. And even if you were a child of the light, maybe you still wouldn't tolerate hearing me. But some of you have. And if you're here, you're listening. That means you're in the same time zone I'm in. Now, I'm not talking about an earthly time zone. Children of the day to expose darkness is to walk as you were created to be. Children of the Most High. And that light is the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news. And the assurance of that light, the battery that keeps that light going, the oil that keeps that light going, is the Holy Spirit sent to you. And it takes almost a lifetime to gain it. Not to gain the working power of the Holy Spirit, but to even comprehend that the Holy Spirit is in fact the Holy Spirit. That's why you can't give your oil to anybody else. Because that oil came with a price, didn't it? You have gone through so many things. You have been squeezed. And that oil is precious. Because it took you so long to obtain it. But now your flame won't go out. Those who truly have oil. They also have faith. You see. If you have no oil. How can the wick stay lit? So then what is the oil? Isn't the oil the faith that we have? That we know how to use because everybody is given a measure of faith. And Jesus said, if your faith was the size of a mustard seed, well, then you could do a thing here or there. But faith must be tried. And when your faith is tried, that happens with a price. We go through something. And then we begin to use our faith. And with that faith, your fire does not go out. You will yet still believe. Some of you are just as stubborn as I am because you've been trying to. Because I'll tell you point blank. If in my lifetime Jesus never comes, that will not move me. His promise is still sure. I've walked my life without a healing. It did not move me. I still set my heart to serve him. We have all messed up plenty of things in our lives, but I still wouldn't stop. You think David perfectly took care of the sheep. When he was that little shepherd boy, no, he didn't. He had to learn trial and error for the most part. So he messed up a few times. And an entire nation backed away when Goliath came. But guess what? David had oil. As he loved to take care of those sheep, he knew God would take care of him. Why? Because he was learning the entire time as a shepherd boy. You know what he was learning? That David being a shepherd boy to take care of sheep takes a commitment. And if we can commit ourselves to take care of something so minuscule, then the Father, looking at us, we're wonderfully and beautifully made, who predestined us before he framed the worlds. The Father looking at us will surely not let us fall to something like Goliath. David knew this. Why? Because David lived a small truth, and that small truth allowed him to slay that giant. 
It wasn't the big thing that killed the giant. It was a small recognition that, oh yes, if my heart can be towards these animals, then I know my God's heart is for me. If I am careful to watch out for predators for these sheep, then my father is surely knowledgeable of all things in my path. And by his name, I will not fail. David did things in the name of the Lord. Because David knew what it was to protect and have compassion upon something everybody thought was meaningless. And through his training as being a shepherd, he began to discover God's love. We're not too dissimilar. I read the Acts of the Apostles, the Gospels of Jesus Christ, and every time I do that, I see a father who refuses to change his mind about you going all the way through. So guess what? Do you know what? You don't have to impress a soul. You don't have to be noticed by people. The world did not know Christ. It's not going to know you either. Until Christ is revealed again. And that is the time when in Israel they say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You don't have to go find love. You are in fact love by the origin of love itself. You're searching, everything you've been searching for is called Abba Father. The completion is made possible through Christ. You've been looking to be noticed, to be seen, to be heard, to be important, to feel like you matter. And all this time, you were loved. You've always mattered. Isn't it funny how we search for things? But if we don't know this, we begin to do things and we corrupt ourselves in doing them. And what I'm telling you is that. Don't risk yourself over something outside of the gospel of Jesus Christ and face a punishment of men because you worked with the devices of men. But if you are to be hated by men, to be punished or even killed and do so while walking in the path of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ you see because in his path your experiences of all of what mankind has against you is far different than if you walk in your own path your predestined path is where the Lord is for you and that path is not through revenge, nor is it through force. It's through a yielding and an understanding that, yes, my Father loves me. That's the point you need to get to in your lives. Don't live incomplete. Because the Father does love you. I can know this. Somebody else can know this. But you have to know it. You have to know it. You must know it. You must find it. Because once you find that, you'll stop trying to prove yourself to everybody else. When times become full of paranoia, as they are now, unnecessary death will take place. I can see it coming. I see it for me. Those who live authentically will authentically live and they will live everlasting and they will not die all these folks who put themselves in danger coming against the Lord's servants why would you judge a servant 
somebody else's servant, why would you judge someone else's servant? That is a principle of the Most High God. Not to judge another man's servant. Not to judge the servant of another entity. There are people out there who are serving the Lord, but you have other people out there that say they're not serving the Lord. It is heartbreaking. Because the Lord said it must needs be that offenses come, but woe to him through who they come. Those people through whom these offenses are coming. You've had your day to choose. Sadly, you've chosen. It's a tragedy. You see, God's children are redeemed. Each and every one of them. But those who stood against the Messiah, they must perish. They will suffer. They will seek death and will not find it. That's a tragedy. For so long, The Lord has given us correction in many things. Take heed to it. You're just not here to pass the time. You're here to demonstrate what the Lord has given you. And to each of us, he's given a common thing called a belief in Christ. But to each of us, there are different things given to us. Very different things. Don't judge one another. And I'll tell you this, the person who truly walks in love does not judge. They don't judge. Do you know why? Because they're preoccupied with having the mind of Christ. And what is the mind of Christ, by the way? Because I'm hearing too much about people saying, well, you know, it, it is our duty and mission to expose this darkness and expose this darkness. Let me tell you something. Did Jesus walk around exposing darkness? Let me tell you what he did. Jesus came that we may have life and have life more abundantly. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever shall believe within him would not perish but have everlasting life. We already studied in the book of Hebrews and Romans and we saw that God would not suffer Christ to get out of the crucifixion. No wonder Jesus said, Father, if it possible. He didn't want that cup, but he said, nevertheless, thy will be done. That's what he said. To have the mind of Christ is to love your neighbor as yourself. To love your enemy. To do good to those who despitefully use you and persecute you. Those who revile from you. People will part company from you. That's the mind of Christ. Even the Lord said, why do you call me Lord and you don't do what I say? Jesus asked us very small things. Number one, he said, love your enemy. Love your neighbor. Love them as you would love your own soul. If somebody asks of you to go with them one mile, go with them two. Right? Right? someone smacks you on the uh, left cheek turn to him the right also in other words don't seek revenge vengeance is mine saith the Lord people want to be perceived as being strong but they're not even strong enough to be what they truly are inside because I can tell you this it was already written in the Bible those who will perish have turned into something they were never born to be you were never born to be a sinner and to continue in that path you were never ever born to be condemned because Jesus said so these are scriptures people don't normally read they're in the Bible people have become something they were never destined to be and they become those people because of pain because something happened in their lives they cover up and they're bitter internally and they're trying to be noticed too that's why in the last days it's sin. They would do some pretty crucial things. 
to people and think that they do God of service by removing you. You know what it is? It's that Sadducee complex again. It is the ideology that, hey, I know what's right. And these people are deceiving you. Just like the Sadducees. Didn't they say that about Christ? Didn't the Pharisees say that about Christ? Didn't the scribes and the lawyers say that about Christ? Didn't they lock up the apostles? Didn't they forbid them to speak and to, to, to preach in the name of Jesus? Of all the names, not the name of Jesus. And they said so after perceiving the miracles and could not discount them. Why? Because the name of Jesus effectively dethrones all who ever thought to hold his throne. He is King and Kings and Lord of Lords. But you see, he's coming. And those who stood against him, that think they're serving him, but they're standing against him. You know what he's going to say to them? Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Wait a minute, Lord. Didn't we do this in your name? Yes. Didn't we do this in your name? Yes. Didn't we heal in your name? Yes. Didn't we get groups together and study your word? Yes. You know what the problem is? Jesus said, uh, you didn't feed me when I was hungry. You didn't clothe me when I was naked. You did not visit me when I was in prison. You didn't give me anything to drink when I was thirsty. Oh, when did we see you thirsty? When did we see you in jail? Jesus said, what you've done to the least of these, you've also done unto me. And folks, what I'm telling you, if you're out there pointing at another ministry, and that ministry is not your servant or not serving you, and somehow you don't trust that God is in control of his own creation, and you're thinking you're doing God a service by exposing darkness by becoming darkness because the Lord said vengeance is mine saith the Lord so how can you expose darkness when Lucifer is not even exposed to you is he not still hidden do you know who the Antichrist is it is not time for that revealing yet is it all these things will be revealed according to God's timing so who are we to go out and judge another man's process. You went through a process. The only difference in other notable folks who go through a process is that other people can see them and hear them. Do you not know that the ones who can't see, nor do you hear about, nor do they talk to you, they lead thousands astray. Hundreds of thousands astray. Because you can't see what they're doing. You don't hear what they're doing. Therefore, they continue to do what they do. But what people do is they go out in a spirit of ignorance, spirit of condemnation, anger and bitterness, not love. See, if you saw a failing ministry, let me tell you the truth, even the people in COT, if you saw a failing ministry, how do, you, how do you know that that person is just not thirsty? How do you know that that person is just not hungry? How do you know if that person is simply not in prison? See, we don't like to think of it that way. But I'll tell you this. There are some ministers out there that are hungry. I'll tell you something now. I thirst. I thirst. Did you give me something to drink? Or did you chastise me? There were times in my life I was in bondage. Did you come to help me get set free? Or did you just confirm the bondage? I didn't have on the right garments. At a point in time in my life, did you come to clothe me? See, this is what I'm saying. When you point out the obvious of what you think, you're not clothing anybody. You're not breaking any bonds. You're not visiting anybody while they're in their captivity, showing them great love and the mercies of Christ. When somebody needs life-giving water of Jesus of Nazareth, 
Many people come to them with condemnation of vinegar. The same thing they did to Christ, they're doing now to those who represent Christ. Because I'll share this with you. If a man so much as points someone to the Messiah, you know what they're crying out? I'm not talking about people who say, you come to me and I'll show you how to get to Jesus. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about people who say, you go to the Messiah. You give your life to Christ. The Bible tells us about such. You see, there's a sincerity no one should have ever questioned. Are we that bitter in these days that we let the world's doctrines get to us so much that we have become the rules of each other? There's so many people out there, they have become their own wolf. They are running from themselves. They are their own wolves. Hmm? Somebody says, do you know what Jesus was writing in the ground? <laughs> I'll tell you this. Before I even knew that story, I had a small little nephew come up to me one time after I showed him a few things. Right? And he didn't listen. And I'm telling him something. And he came to me like it was an emergency. Guess what I did? Guess what I did? I just started, you know, how you funnel, you, you sit there and roll your fingers around and do everything, which means, oh boy, this kid is crying. This kid is throwing a fit. <sighs> how long do I have to keep giving this lesson? I find that funny. When Jesus was writing something on the ground, what were they doing? Accusing that woman. That's what they were doing. Accusing a woman. Accusing. We do the same thing. We do it when we're on the phone and somebody told us the same story for the 144th time. And they still won't hear what you're saying. But Jesus often said the same thing. And this is why I pick up on a portion of that character. He said, how long must I be with you? He kept saying that. How long must I be with you? He did. So Jesus just scribbled in the ground. He already knew what the Father gave him to do. Jesus, having the mind of the Father, saw us as children. When you're around a bunch of children throwing cupcakes at each other, and about a guilty one in your side about to accuse another guilty one, right before Dad stands up, he scratches his head or something, man. He'll close his book, take his glasses off, set them on the table, and go, ah, here we go. Right? I'm not saying that's what he did. But I am telling you, that's, he repeatedly did things like that. He did. He really did. I think he was passing the time. I think he did what was customary. That's what I think something some of them do today that's what i think that's exactly what i think and do you know what speaking of that all those who are following christ you're going to be shielded you're also going to become a danger to those who stand against christ you see christ only came in person once and then he sent ambassadors and he told them if they don't receive the gospel from you when it's given by the Holy Spirit they're rejecting God not you he said the kingdom of heaven you go tell them the kingdom of heaven has come near to you he told his disciples if they reject that good news you shake the dust off your feet it'd be better that Sodom and Gomorrah is going to be better than they right they're heaping on themselves destruction. We read in the book of Acts, the same people who had Christ were to be killed. John and Peter went to, knowing what they did, told them what they did, right? But they had the mind of Christ. And what did they tell them? Do you guys remember from this morning? 
they came back and did what they did. And it was a miracle that took place to gather to get their attention, so that the ones who crucified Christ that ordered Barabbas to be free and for Christ to be killed so that their souls would be saved. That's why they were sent there. That is just love. Was John and, and, and Peter bold at the time? No, they were not. No, they were not bold at the time. They had simple instructions, and God did the rest. But John and Peter did not marvel at the miracle that took place. They didn't. What was that, Christine? Maybe the Bible isn't specific. Satan is, Satan is or is not omnipresent. The wolves on the internet played a small piece of something you probably explained. I couldn't find it in the Bible. I'm like, is, is he omnipresent? Let me, let me give you Lucifer's counsel. And they have a type of hive mind, right? Let me give you an example of this. You can look at mankind and see Lucifer in this respect. Can I share this with you guys with no one, you know, well, some of you might fly off the chair. You'd be all right because it's happening in the world, you might as well see it. If a person is not following Christ, right, they are bound in the ways of Lucifer himself. So outside of those who follow Jesus Christ, what do we do? You don't have to look at somebody else. What do we do? I'll tell you what we do. We take the story we hear, spread it around the world in less than an hour and throw people under the bus. That's what we do. We have joy in condemning other folks and laugh about it at their expense. That's what we do. We do all things to protect our own reputations and to stay hidden from any potential blow up that might happen. Once a story gets started, that's what we do. That's Facebook. You see that the nature of Lucifer is in your flesh. Is he omnipresent? He's an influencer with thousands of agents. I often say this one phrase, but mankind has rivaled the deeds of the demons. Mankind has. Yes. Man's hearts are continually evil. Does Satan speak into your mind? Yes, he is the prince of the air. He has that title for a reason, not because he flies on America Airlines either. The prince of the air, he has that title because he is part of a collection of things that have a hive mind. If one knows, all of them know. Why do you think the demons that were around there in, 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 in the province of in certain provinces of Israel already knew who the disciples were? They were hiding out in people. How did they find out? Because they're spiritual. Their way of communication is not by the lip. It's more of a mental, instant knowing communication, right? Hive mentality. Why do you think when you become angry, you remember everything evil the other person or everything wrong the other person ever did? That's because you have those entities speaking into you. You have a good memory of somebody's wrongdoings when you're angry. Haven't you noticed? Hmm? Have you noticed that? You can recall everything a person did wrong when you're angry. I mean, it just flows out of your mouth so smooth. That's like the anti-Holy Spirit, isn't it? Hmm? It is. So we can look at ourselves to see the influences and just how Satan operates if we open our eyes. Right? That we can. And the Holy Spirit in a like manner doesn't just give to one person. Here's how truth works. In order for me to know the same truth that really is truth, you must know it too. Let's just say truth is a red, uh, a red golf ball. Right? No, let's just say it's a big red beach ball. How about that? But it's on a golf green. Right? All of us who go out to the, uh, the golf course, we, we have to see the red ball. We see the red ball. All of us see it. So when someone comes up and says, Hey, let me tell you guys about a red ball, and you say, oh, that one? The Holy Spirit works like that. The Holy Spirit does not give one person one thing, and the rest have no clue. No. Truth is established before we were created. And if our spirits are sanctified from the beginning, and that love of the truth placed within us, we all have the truth, the truth. Not a lie, the truth. So then, truth is something we all know because you have to confirm a truth, right? How could you confirm a truth or accept something as truth if you didn't already have the truth? I'll give you one more example I'll often use. If I started speaking Japanese and none of you could speak Japanese, you wouldn't understand what I was saying. You know why? A language is not usable to you, is it? And if it's not usable, what will I speak? I could speak something very important, but guess what? It would be just garbage. During Holy Spirit's the same way. Just like right now, many of you you don't know what to make of this election. 
The truth be told, you don't know what to make of it. Even those who are for Trump or against him, you know what? Those who are for Trump are saying, oh, I hope he does the right thing, but I'm not sure. They're not sure. Folks, I'm telling you the truth. There's an instability taking place. Also, there's a truth within you. It's almost like a blank spot. You don't know what's going to take place from day to day now. We're in uncharted waters. But we know we're in the waters of prophecy themselves, it itself. Things are happening. I told you guys about a prayer that I often pray, and some people laughed at it at first, but it's going to start making sense. Some people had advice for me, but they didn't understand what I was talking about. I always prayed after a certain vision I had. I said, Lord, please don't let me be caught off guard. Lord, I do not want to be caught off guard. And let me tell you why. Because while people were taking care of their business in the world, they were not coming back to Christ. They didn't even know they fell away. Number one. Number two, at one of the times when this falling away began to happen, these folks who went back to take care of things, and even some who didn't, these entities, black, fell out of the sky and there was no defense. But listen, we're not talking about E.T. When they fell onto a person, it took their soul into a place of absolute negativity and darkness of which there was no escape. The word hell. This, wherever these, listen, when these things fell upon you, you would rather go to a known place like hell. That's not where you went. Your idea of hell does not do hell justice. You see flames. I see something worse. It really frightened my soul. It shook me to my soul so bad. Because I was being placed in so many people's situations. You see, at first I thought, oh my Lord, are these my situations? And then I found out, wait a minute, I wasn't in this situation. This never happened to me. And so I was beginning to experience everybody's little situations that were authentic. And each and every person was a Christian. Folks, I'm telling you something. These people who went back that never came back to the fold, they were Christians. They loved the Lord. You, see, you, you need to understand me. They were trying to serve Christ. They had an order to whatever they were doing, whatever their servitude was. But their faith never grew. Their faith didn't do anything. And they began to believe a lie. And do you know what the lie was? I'll tell you part of the lie. I will not dare speak the rest, but I'll give you the small part. Part of the lie was, oh, I'm okay. I can do this. I'm okay doing this. That was the lie. That this or that won't hurt me. I have time to take care of this and then get back to that. That was the lie. That shook me to my soul. You see, it wouldn't have shaken me if it were something that were a little more obvious. But every single last one of us have said the same thing. I've got time. How many of you right now tonight? You said mentally in your mind, well, I have a little time to do so and so. That's what made it so frightening. Because all of us say those things. Let me, let me put it to you this way. How many times have you got an unction to read the word of God? Well, you had to go somewhere real quick. It was only going to take a minute. And you said, well, that'll work out when I get back. Listen to me now. You said, when I get back, I can go ahead and jump into it and take notes and everything. So it works out. That's how it happened. The very things you would think wouldn't do anything. That's what was taking, causing people to go back and they were trapped in it. They couldn't escape. They couldn't see it coming. And those entities sealed their fate. They started coming out of the sky. And you could not see them by the human eye because, listen, you could be standing next to someone. You would be taken directly into the earth. Your soul, your body would just perish on the ground. Your body would die in view of other people, but your soul would be an instant torment. And there was no escape, no cry, no anything. You didn't have, there was no time. That's what I'm talking. This, this was the, the I dare not, I can't tell the rest, but I'll tell you that part because there was no chance a person had. If they, if they fall upon you, you have no chance. The people around you will see you as just dying. Maybe you had a heart attack. But your soul goes directly into a dark that is beyond dark. And all they were doing was saying, well, I have time. I can get back to this. Let me go grab some fast food and let me go check my, go work something out with this checking account. Let me go make sure my, you know, this or that is straight away. That, that's what shook me. Did I perceive that vision as a falsehood? No, because every single piece of it is coming to pass. I shared that with Angela a long time ago, before COT was like it is now, before I knew anybody out there on the internet like you guys know, and I described some folks perfectly, down to the shirt that they wore on a specific time when they were in a like situation. 
That's impossible, isn't it? That's impossible. I'm still shaken today by it, and I fight hard that nobody falls prey to it. Can't you see that? Consequently, if the Lord gives you something, don't worry about people thinking you're crazy, because if it's from the Lord, you're not. This country will go to war, and it's not going to be like it's being described right now. Don't be too involved, and there are too many unknown components. And the only way to win is to strike first. These countries in this world, they are angry at one another, because each threatens the ideology of another. And no two ideologies are like Israel. They're going to be forced to respond very shortly. Will that wake you up? For years, the Lord has revealed what will take place. What did we hear? I'm not talking about from me. I'm talking about from people like Pastor Paul Bailey. The Hagmans revealed some things. Ministers that you guys are familiar with. Justice revelation was given to the world 2,000 plus years ago. So the Lord warned you through those who rely upon his name. All those you hear speaking to you, are they from heaven? No, they're from flesh. So when they speak to you, and you begin to look at the flesh, that's like a filter to find out who loves who. You thought you were just criticizing a person. It's not what you were doing. You're criticizing a servant of Christ. Because Christ called them. But he, obviously, he didn't let you know about everybody he called, now did he? And I know a lot of people worry about wolves in sheep's clothing. And let me tell you something about that. Especially about the little ones, pastors. It'd be better for a person to have the earth tied around his neck and thrown into the sun for eternity than to ever hurt one of the little ones because this I know. See, I was a little one once. I was. You know what kind of guidance I had? Hmm? You know who took care of me? The Lord revealed things to me directly. A little one? Would the, would the Lord suffer his infants to be deceived? No, it's a controlled type. It's a controlled type of walk they go through. They may be plucked out of your nest, but it's necessary for them to get roughed up a little bit that they may know, yes, it's a devil out there. Yes, the world wants to gain me, and I can be lost in that world. So they're being educated. They're not falling to anybody. You mess with one of the little ones. You've condemned yourselves. And what you do to them, you've also done unto Christ. So if you're down telling stories, going in little groups saying, hey, won't you come over here? Guess what you're doing? You're trying to recruit Jesus of Nazareth through them. You see, because they're little ones, they don't know too much. But you didn't know that the Savior is seeing right through their eyes. But see, now he's about to react because of them. Those who beguiled the little ones will surely pay a terrible price that will be commanded from above and no one can get them out of it they had their chance but their hearts were full of iniquity and if iniquity remains in your heart you're in trouble because Jesus said he's the one that purges you of these iniquitous things and these dead works and if he is the one that purges you that means you have to resist Christ to stay wicked and there is no inheritance with the Lord if you remain on the side of iniquity if you resist the Son of Man from changing your life, you will have no inheritance with him. And the Lord already said, people will be buying and selling, marrying, giving into marriage. That's how the end days will be, just like it is now. And he said, they knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. They won't expect, they won't expect it. And they're out there doing that. Don't you focus on them. The sword of the living God and of the Lord will fight against them directly. The sword of his spirit is close unto them. They're rejecting the Messiah and they refuse to love. They would rather condemn and make a name among men. Because when you condemn someone, you don't make a name before the Lord your God. 
You make a name before men, and so men will be your inheritance. And guess what? Men's hearts are evil continually. Good luck with that inheritance. Evil continually. Isn't that a key for some of your lives? Because that's what you're inheriting now. I tell you this, you're joint heirs with Christ, correct? Those who follow the Lord. The kingdom of God comes without observation. No one's going to say, here it is or there it is. The kingdom of God is within you. Are you not joint heirs with Christ to inherit the kingdom of God? Well, I'll tell you this, no eyeball has seen the kingdom of heaven because it resides within the one that accepts Yeshua HaMashiach. And they are taught things about the kingdom of God. That inheritance is taking place right now. And if that is the case, then so is the inheritance of torment being inherited right now. People are not careful because they don't believe. They are falling away like flies. And the true believers, because it's written in the Word of God, all they can do is mourn the loss of a brother or a sister. And that's exactly what they do. Cam, are you sneaking one in there? He says that they're truly a black box satellite, black night satellite, I believe they coined it. Or is that a bunch of malarkey? Before the space program, there was more than one. I don't know who came up with one. The documents have been, they're not classified anymore. There was more than one. Egypt reported them. Do you know that? There were stories about them. How they would put out their wings while the sun was out. And then they would get tired and fold their wings back up and go back to their orbits. They were talking about things well above the clouds, but they would stay up there metallic and reflective. Well, what happens when our satellites go out there? What do they do? They put out their wings? Yes, they do. It's for solar energy. So what happens when it's a little bit of turbulence up there by way of radiation and things of that nature? They start to retract them. You've already written about these satellites in many cultures a long time ago. So yes, there are things up there. There have been things up there. See, sometimes we read something and we're so wise. I'm not making fun of anybody. I'm just saying we, we're so prideful that sometimes we can read the most simplest of things. And it and naturally equate it to something we have accomplished or we'll say, well, we, because we, I can't figure it out. It doesn't exist. That's foolishness. What did King Solomon say? There's nothing new under the sun. All things that were will be again. Right? There truly is nothing new under the sun. Documented in all cultures. We just don't understand. Because we think we, we want to believe in a fairy tale. Like the nature of the universe. Mm, it was written, they left their estate, they left their first estate to come here. Who did? The fallen angels. Left their first estate. But what does that mean? The spiritual realm is beyond the realm you're able to maneuver in. And it's also inside of it. These things may be a mystery to you, but they're not to me. Where does our Father dwell? Does He dwell in the clouds? No. No, He doesn't. People make up certain things, but in historical times they wrote about these things. People just can't believe them. Like the Temple of Hathor, things of that nature. And then people say, ooh, that's scary. No, it's not scary. Are you terrified of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar? What about Shaquille O'Neal? Are you terrified of him? Let me tell you how, let me tell you how foolish we can be sometimes. If this, if all the people of this civilization were incinerated, Right? Think about this. They were incinerated. Then, over the course of time, nature just took its toll. What's going to survive, ladies and gentlemen? Stone will. Right? Stones will survive. Well, what type of stone monuments do we have? Weird things. That's what we have. People. Statues of people. Tall, great men, right? They may read about pre President Trump, who the people worshipped. And they may call him. If, 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 if we lived in a time, let's just say that uh, 3,600 years from now, right? Somebody lives and then, let's just say, we're, let's set us back 3,600 years. Let's just say this is year negative 3,600, right? Before Christ, before all of them. Well, if something happened to society, which it did through the flood, and then those survivors of the flood, right? Trusted in their faith in the Father. They're not, they're not worried about translating all of what Egypt did and all this other stuff. People start coming up with these explanations. The men are renowned U.S. presidents. Putin, are you, that's what it would be. Are you starting to see now? Things we have today in a different form will be the same thing back then. Men of renowned. They called, they had people like Hercules. 
Huh? What about Congress? You think they call them Zeus and all those fellows? Well, that was, uh, that was Mount Washington, right? That was from a different world. See the round shape of the architecture? They, they were mimicking a spaceship. Then they get smart and say, oh, these people were foolish. They worshipped, you know what they worshipped? They worshipped bread. It looks like a bun. We found signs all over the place. Now, we know them as hamburger buns and McDonald's signs, right? What about the arches of McDonald's? They'll say, ah, see, they found the Constellation Idiot. That's where they came from. No, it's a McDonald's sign. So what I'm telling you is that without proper context, we tend to interpret what we see like we want to see it to fit the paradigm we want. That's why the Bible says people would turn back to fables and fairy tales and all this other stuff, and they would abandon sound doctrine. Half of that stuff is what they're doing, and the other half, believe me, you don't want to know. What they do, what is covered up, you already have knowledge of. You just have no, you have not imagined what it looks like, but you have knowledge of because you read the Bible. Don't ever think those those things in the Bible, the statements in the Bible, the, the, the civilizations in the Bible look like you did. They don't. Just like we have diversified races, so they had diversified physical forms in the earth. We have different races with very small differences in physical form, don't we? We do. Asian folks have a skull structure different than um, uh, European folks, different than African folks, different than, you know, Native American folks. But all these things were augmented in the past. They were. Some people had horns like they do now in China, and you don't even know that. You don't know there are tribes in China with real horns. You don't even know that, because China has effectively shut down information coming out of it. There are many things you don't know. You don't want to know. Because you say, oh, these things are possible, and then you would frighten yourself for no reason whatsoever. A horn is a bone, right? So if you saw a person with two horns, everybody in America would say, that is Lucifer. The beast himself, if he didn't know any better, would point to that thing and say, that's Lucifer. But there are tribes in China right now with horns. I'm not talking about their explanation. I'm talking about genetically grown. They have horns, and it's passed on from generation to generation. All the ancient genes are coming back. And I'll tell you something else, I don't mean to sound offensive. Well, I won't say it. Let's just say it came back with male and female identity crises. All these things are happening at the same time, the same time span. Right? There's a mingling of the spirit of man already. So it causes an identity crisis. When people know who they are, they're strong, like our forefathers. Strong. They went through harsh conditions. Strong. Rough winters. Strong. Weren't they? Didn't matter what they were, Asian or whatever, they were strong. We're not so strong these days. We're very weak because our spirits are mingled with something else and telling you the truth. But see, that's that's something else you have to get into because then you have to go through why people were worshiping McDonald's signs and all this other stuff. And that's, that's just a subject I don't desire to get into because it would waste a lot of time. We're going to know the truth anyway. So better to spend our time on the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the truth calling upon your life that you may walk with an assurance and confidence. In the very word that is the truth of all things. Better for you to know that the Father truly does love you. That the Savior stands ready at your door. He knocks at the door of your heart. Better for us to know that the Holy Spirit is a promise granted to all of us that we may finish the work of the Lord. You can never finish the work of the Lord without the Holy Spirit because Jesus said so. The Holy Spirit is sent. In the name of Jesus, from the Father to us, that we may finish the work that was began. He is the author and finisher of our faith. Thus, we have a promise of the Holy Spirit that will come as our helper. That we may finish the work. So we have to be focused upon the work. That's why we're reading the book of Acts. Because we're going to see they were focused upon the calling of the Lord, not the miracles. They were focused upon the calling upon their life, and they were appreciative of the Father, and they absolutely believed. But they had to constantly be reminded that they were loved and God did so. So you didn't even know that, did you? Those of you who were here this morning's study, and there will be further studies on that. That was an eye-opener this morning. It should have been. I hope it was. There is no power that will overcome the love of the living God. When he comes back with 10,000 of his holy ones to execute judgment upon the earth, he will cause great guilt. He is the light that will return, exposing all darkness. He will expose the darkness, because He is full of light. Hmm. He'll destroy them with the brightness of His coming, won't He? 
Why? Because darkness fades in the presence of light. That's why. And shadows will always dip behind the light. Do you not know that even in the natural world, the way the Lord set up optics and the way you see things, perspectives and shadows, the shadow can never stand in the presence of a light source. I love that. It can never stand in the presence of a light source. It must always hide behind something. Do you know that? The light that's coming with Christ is all truth and all love. And whatever is not light must hide. But this time it will be destroyed forever. I love that. A very bright light is coming. And there'll be no hiding place for darkness. And if there's no hiding place, I tell you, darkness is overtaken by light every single time. You see, the darkness can never overtake the light. But light can always change darkness. If you have a small light, it can make a very dark room, right? It can shine that little light, and that little light hits over all the spots very subtly. As it gets brighter, it can change all things. I call that salvation. I call that us. We were born in darkness. Jesus is that light. As we are saved, we shine brighter and brighter in the darkness. Its fate is pushed away, is done for, is destroyed. And the Lord is coming. 10,000 of us holy ones is coming. Jesus alone subdued all things. But he gave you placement to grow. See, when light begins to shine, he's very gracious with us, knowing that we're mingled in with darkness. He allows us to hide sometimes, that we're not destroyed. That's why the light is not so bright now. It can't be bright. It would destroy all darkness. Us being born as darkness with a spark of light, we would die with it. So he gave us time. He gave us a way he called his son to see the light and not run away from it, but run to it. Because the closer you get, the closer you get to a light source, the less of a shadow you have, right? And when you're totally consumed by light, there is no darkness, period, anywhere on you, no place for a shadow either. That's called grace and mercy. Because all darkness should have been destroyed. But God said, no, I have children, and they're part of that darkness. I'll call each and every one and send them to you, my light, Jesus Christ. And you keep them, and you hold them. And I'll send my spirit in your name. They will always have instruction, always have direction. They'll never be alone, but they will always grow. That when I come back in my fullness, of truth and light and love, they will not be destroyed. You see, if we don't allow Christ in us, then we are darkness. He is the light of this world. He is the way, the truth of this world. Without him within us, the Father would destroy us upon arrival. We would be DOA, dead on arrival. But with Christ, we can be lit from the inside out. And the more we adopt of Christ, the brighter we become. Now, you know what happens to two bright light sources? They begin to attract one another. And the big one will attract the small one. And guess what? The small one becomes brighter, but so does the big one. And they begin to share all properties, becoming one. That's how light works. You know that the bond of light at such a magnitude can never, ever be broken. And it's also self-sustaining. It will never go out. That's what's happening here. That's why you should never be impressed to demonstrate to anyone that you matter. Because the truth is, you do matter. You mean something. You're critical. You're precious. You're loved and embraced and never alone. You need not prove anything to anyone. But do all things unto the Lord. That you do so out of truth. Because the Father is coming back. And He is all light. And before Him will be no darkness. And that's why no one will be able to utter a lying word before him. Lies are in darkness. Excuses in darkness. Before the judgment seat of Christ, if you're filled with Christ, you are innocent and have no sin. <sighs> By the washing of the blood of the Lamb, the darkness upon you is destroyed. It is Jesus who is converting you. He is the one given the charge. To oversee your full conversion. 
So don't resist it. You need not make a name for yourself in the world. You have a name. And that name will be granted to you, and no one will have a name above yours. You're the only one that will know your name, because none will exercise power over you. Your name in the world is temporary. Your eternal name, no one knows, save the Father. These are dangerous days, but they're also days of understanding, and the days of the breakthrough, even in troubled times, even in troubled times. Jacob says about the shadow things that my children are sometimes scared of their own shadow. I'd say so. Children believe in bright things, don't they? It always scares a young child. And their thoughts are so pure and bright. Darkness is unimaginable to them. It really is. It is the unknown. It is the bad imagination. The negative side of them. They do steal children, you know. they do lie to them because they say they didn't eat that cookie they ate, but that's not the point. That's not the point. But folks understand something. These times that are upon us are critical and serious. The accusations will fly. Paranoia is going to increase. Lots of paranoia and backstabbing. There will be fallouts of folks. There will be. Be very still during this time concerning mankind. But never stop going forward in the truth of our Lord. Don't even let yourselves hinder yourselves from opening up that door even wider to Jesus Christ. Stand behind the pastors. Pray for this country and the multitude of innocent people who have no clue what's happening. As the Father reveals to you, meditate on it and pray always. Men ought always pray. This country really needs your prayers. Your brothers and sisters, who you don't know yet, really need your prayers. Some of your future companions, should the Lord see fit, they need your prayers. They're in the group of the ones that you likely may condemn. They need your prayers. The leadership of this country and the leadership of many countries. Intercede for them by way of the Father. Please do that. Please do that. You'll see distress in their faces if you look careful. That distress is real. You'll also begin to see distress in the face of Russia. Deep distresses in the face of Israel. You're going to be forced to act. And while that may sound funny or improbable right now, you will see it. But before we deal with that, we may have to deal with being caught off guard. Let your priority be the Lord. Let your priority be your brother and your sister. I don't know how else to tell you. But these are the days of our steps of truth, and they mean everything. Every single step means everything. I really don't know how else to put it. What you do is life and death. Folks, I want to say God bless you so that you guys can get on with your evenings. Now, obviously, my time is going to be split in 10,000 directions, potentially. But you guys will allow. Um, you're going to be, don't, don't be, tell everybody, don't panic when they can't log into the site. Our homepage has some data postings going on it. Right? And some of you guys with a smart device is based on your location. The site will look like an, a web app on your application to some of you. Because that's being implemented, but we have to do that by region. Okay? We can't do it for everybody. Because, uh, there are going to be some, uh, code chain, code adjustments. Oh, there it is. Microphone. Anyway, there are going to be some adjustments. So we're going to have that in different parts and that's how everything is going up. Radio stations, lists will be emailed out to you guys. We're getting our things back from the FCC and uh, some of the other licenses that we have. 
we had to get some low bandwidth license and some, or, or I'm sorry, local, local uh, transmission license. We had to do so in several different states. So, so we can be assigned a station uh, number for certain locations. That's a redundant system, but uh, anybody can use those things to tune in. And um, we're really being blessed. You know, we have to know how to do these things. But believe it or not, there are a lot of people who I'll just have to share it with you. It's a, one of those things. But we've, uh, we're, we're starting to be invited. You know, people are, are uh, certain people who own certain things are saying, well, we'll cover it. We'll cover that, you know, cover that. But we have the know-how internally to do the code work, and, and we have the equipment, right? But they have the rebroadcasting abilities, which is going to help us out. Because some of these people see, they see the unseen. You wouldn't believe who some of these people are who really do know that prophecy is passing. Some of those people are on Fox News and some are on CNN. Some are on NBC. Well, I don't know about NBC, but some of them are in these places. And believe me, they see it coming. So much so. We begin to see swap outs in mainstream media of who works there and who doesn't. You will. Who's their conscience will no longer allow them to go forward in certain things. I'm not talking about the switching of presidents. They understand the job of the presidents. But some people get torn between what they have to do in the media and their obligations as a Christian. They do. They can't do that. Folks, I want to say God bless you. Yes, Angela is, uh, I talked to Angela last night, not today, this morning. I checked in on her by way of writing. Didn't check on her today, but I'm about to, and we'll see how she's doing. She wasn't, she wasn't feeling well. It's, it's so strange. First, I'll go down. She's up now, and then she's down, I'm back up again, and We've got Larry. I did speak to Larry. Larry's recovering, but uh, that's what happens, folks, when you're going forward with the Lord. Expect opposition. There's nothing more than opposition. Pray a prayer of faith, a declaration in the truth of our Lord. That's all you have to do. Pray that his will be done in Angela's life and in my life. You never have to be specific with me. You can always support me by saying, Lord, your will be done in his life. Do you know why? If I ask you to pray for something for me, that may not be what the Lord wants in my life. You can't go wrong by praying the will of God in my life, because I'm not very specific. Now, I don't care what I have to lose. I care that this walk is completed. All right? That's what I care about. The Lord knows what he's doing for us. He does. But men are always pray. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Pray for them. Pray for them. And, and, and the Holy Spirit will always lead you in truth, never in a lie. So if it comes from the Holy Spirit, I'm telling you, it's going to be the exact thing that needed to be prayed for. Some of you do that by email, but I don't answer you. When you do that by the Holy Spirit, I do not, because it won't edify flesh. But you already know that, via the Holy Spirit. I'm going to get some of you folks on there, so people people will never believe it. They won't believe that process. They just won't believe it. Some people already know what to pray for, and then they'll write a letter saying, I know you, you, you'll read this, but you probably won't say anything about it for so-and-so and so-and-so, so I prayed for it, that's the way it is, but don't worry, God, it, it will do so-and-so. And it works just like that, back and forth, back and forth, by the Holy Spirit, and it's not phony baloney. No, this isn't made up stuff, this is deadly accurate, I mean, just accurate things, with no mistakes, no error. That's the Holy Spirit, there is no error in the Holy Spirit. You guys, and some of you do that by way of other things that you do. The exact, I, to the penny. To the penny, to the statement. You're timing everything. It's, it's highly evident when something is by the Spirit. And when you're moved to do those things, I'm telling you, it is perfect and critical. Always, always perfect and critical. Nothing less than a miracle within itself. It's nothing less than that. So the Holy Spirit is real. But the first step, before you think of anything else, is for you to understand that your Father loves you without fail. He loves you unconditionally. That you must know. If you don't know that, how can you receive? How can you receive the gift of Christ? 